Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have this tutorial on how to crochet this scarf for men and I'm calling it a man scarf because the colors I'm using are more masculine and the stitching is more masculine but this is really a unisex scarf. Anyone could wear this. The scarf itself measures six and a half inches wide by 70 inches in length and this is totally suited for beginners because all we're using is a single crochet and a double crochet and it's just the order in which you use those stitches that creates this really beautiful texture and pattern on the fabric and the other thing that adds to the wonderful look of this scarf is i'm using this self-striping yarn that is so gorgeous and it has just crocheted up so beautifully so this really does add to the look of the scarf. And so you can make the scarf just like this, very, very simple, very basic. But at the end, I will give you an option to crochet a border around the outside edge of the scarf and give it a little bit more of a finished look. And um, this is really simple to do. And this would add about an inch on this way and another inch this way. So let's get started. Now for this project, I am using a number four medium weight yarn. I'm using the Lion Brand Ferris Wheel yarn and the color is Morning Java. It's a number four medium weight yarn. The ball size is three ounces or 85 grams, 270 yards or 247 meter meters and it's 100% acrylic and it is a self-striping yarn and I'm using two balls well not quite two balls probably about a half and a three quarters I'll put a link for this below it's been kind of hard to find right now but any self-striping yarn or solid color yarn would be fine we are going to use a six and a half millimeter crochet hook for the foundation chain and single crochet row. And that's just to make sure that it's nice and loose. If you feel sufficient with your tension, you can just go ahead and use a six millimeter crochet hook. Then you'll need a darning needle and some scissors. And then if you want to do the border around the outside of your scarf, you can just pick a complementary color that is in your color of your yarn. And I'm using the Bernat Premium Yarn and it's a number four medium weight yarn and the color is dark gray heather. And I'll be using that for my border. So starting with the six and a half millimeter crochet hook, we're going to start with a slip knot. And if you're new to crochet, I do have my beginner crochet series and I'll put a link to that below. So place your, your slip knot on your hook and set up your tension and begin with a foundation chain of 18 chains. So yarn over, pull through the loop, yarn over, pull through the loop. And even with a six and a half millimeter crochet hook, you wanna make this foundation chain very loose. And if you're using the six millimeter crochet hook, you wanna make this foundation chain very loose. So go ahead and chain up 18 and I'll see you when that's done. Great. So I have my 18 chains and you can see how loose they are. And if you want to make this a wider scarf, your multiples are two. So you would had, you'd want to add two more chains at a time to make it whatever width you like or yeah, width. And then once you have your multiples, your even multiples, you'll chain one and this is your turning chain. And then we're going to crochet back a row of single crochet and we're going to go into the back loop of these chains. So the chain has on the top this V stitch and on the back it has this bump and that's the, it's that bump you want to crochet into. So you skip this first stitch that's your turning chain. So going into the second bump, put your hook under the loop yarn over, pull your yarn through your loop. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that's a single crochet. And then you go into the next bump, go under that, pull your yarn through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that's a single crochet. So you'll work a single crochet into the back bump 
of each chain stitch until you get to the end of the row. So go ahead and do that. All right, so coming to the end of row one, you want to make sure to catch the back bump of your very first chain. And at the end of this row, you will have 18 single crochets. Now you can switch hooks and go over to the six millimeter hook if you've been using the larger hook. And now for row two, you'll chain three and turn your work and this counts as your first double crochet and then you're going to do a row of double crochet going back so you won't go into the base of this chain this counts as your first double crochet so going into the stitch right next to that you're going to work a double crochet so yarn over put your hook underneath the two top loops pull your yarn through you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops and that's a double crochet and again you'll double crochet into the next stitch so yarn over put your hook under the two loops bring your yarn through you'll have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops so you're going to just do your double crochet all the way along this row until you get to the end and you'll have 18 double crochets including your beginning chain three and here we are coming to the end of this row and working the last double crochet and this last stitch might be a little bit uh, tricky to see but you'll see there's a, a V stitch at the end of this row you want to make sure to catch that and of course you want to count your stitches to make sure you have 18 double crochets and there you go and so that's the end of row two. Now you'll chain one and this is a turning chain. It doesn't count as a stitch. And now you'll row a row of single crochets all the way back. And this is the beginning of the pattern repeat. So you work your first double crochet in that very first stitch after your chain one and did I say single crochet or double crochet? It's a single crochet. <laughs> and going under both loops um, for all these stitches through the entire pattern. So you'll work your single crochet into the top of the double crochets all the way along. And we'll see you at the end of this row. So coming to the end of row three, you'll do a single crochet into that top of that double crochet post and then you'll always work a single crochet into the third chain of that chain three from the previous row so picking up two loops from that third chain of your beginning chain three and work a single crochet and you'll have 18 single crochets at the end of this row three and that's the end of your first pattern repeat row as well so now you'll chain three turn your work and this is where the pattern gets a bit tricky you'll see that you have all these double crochet posts and we are going to be working into every other double crochet post below this row of single crochet and then we'll work in every other single crochet of the single crochet row and I'll show you how we're going to do that so you have your chain three and that counts as your first double crochet and now we're going to come down into this double crochet post and do a front post double crochet so yarn over bring your yarn down and working from the right to the left go in behind that double crochet post grab your yarn and bring it in behind that double crochet post and then pull that loop up nice and tall so it's a above your um, your single crochet row so you want to make that a nice long loop and then work your double crochet and that's a front post double crochet then you're going to work a double crochet into your row of single crochets right above this double crochet post and going under both loops you'll work a double crochet into the row of single crochet 
and then you'll do another front post double crochet in the second double crochet of the double crochet row so yarn over you'll skip the one double crochet and going under the second double crochet right to left under the back of that post bring your yarn from behind pull it in behind that post and pull it up nice and long and then do your double crochet so this is a little bit awkward at first but once you've done a few of them you get into the rhythm of it so then you'll work a double crochet into the single crochet above this double crochet post it follows right after this front post double crochet and work a double crochet into that single crochet and then again you'll skip a double crochet and going into the second double crochet in that row below you'll do your front post double crochet pull that loop nice and long and work your double crochet and then you'll do a double crochet into the next stitch in your row of single crochet and you'll repeat that all the way along and I'll just do it one more time because it's a little bit of a tricky stitch so skip your double crochet and into the second double crochet put your hook behind that double crochet post pull your loop up nice and long and work your double crochet and then do a double crochet in that single crochet above the next double crochet post so you work that pattern all the way along until you get to the end of the row and you don't have to worry about counting these double crochet rows you'll keep track by counting your rows of single crochets so go ahead and i'll see you when that's done so coming to the end of row four which is your row to repeat you should finish with two double crochets at the end of your row after you've done a front post double crochet so to finish this you'll do a double crochet into the top of that single crochet and then you'll do one more double crochet into the last stitch just a regular double crochet so you'll have two regular double crochets at the end of this row and so that's the end of row four and now we'll go into row five so chain one and turn your work and this is a turning chain it doesn't count as a stitch and now you work a row of single crochet into the top of each stitch just like you did before and going under both loops of each stitch and work your row of single crochet and this is where you will count and at the end of this row you'll have 18 single crochets and so coming to the end of row five and remember you have that chain three and you want to work your last single crochet into the third chain of that chain three from the previous row and because that counts as a double crochet stitch and this is where keeping count of this row in the beginning is really important so you'll know you won't miss any stitches and so you'll have 18 single crochets at the end of row five now you'll chain three turn your work and you can see here how this pattern has worked with your front post double crochet in every other stitch and the regular double crochet in every other stitch so for this row we're going to be working into the regular double double crochet stitches with the front post double crochet and that's what's going to create the pattern so for the beginning of row six which is row four of your pattern repeat you will do a double crochet not into the base of this stitch but in the stitch that's at the top of your front post double crochet so do a double crochet into the single crochet on the top of that front post double crochet and now you'll work a front post double crochet into the double crochet between these two front post double crochets so yarn over go in behind that regular double crochet and pull your yarn from behind pull that loop up nice and long and work your double crochet and then you'll do a double crochet into the next stitch which is at the top of this front post double crochet you'll work into that single crochet with a regular double crochet 
and then coming down into this double crochet between the two front post double crochets, you'll work your front post double crochet. So going in behind, pulling your loop in behind and making it nice and tall. And it's really important to make this a nine, nice long loop, otherwise your work will be too tight. So you wanna pull it up nice and long and work your front post double crochet. And then work a double crochet into the single crochet above that front post double crochet. And then work a front post double crochet into that double crochet between those two front post double crochets. So you're just going to work that all the way along. Now coming to the end of row six, you'll have just worked your front post double crochet, your double crochet, and you have these two double crochets at the end. So going into the second from the last, you work your front post double crochet, and then for the very last stitch, you'll work into the last single crochet of this row with a regular double crochet. Just like that. And there you go. And that is the end of row six and the end of the pattern repeat. And you can see what a lovely pattern this creates. I think this is such a, a gorgeous stitch. And so from here on in, all you do is you repeat rows three, which is the row of single crochet. Row four is your first row of front post double crochets. Five is another row of single crochets. And then six is the second row of front post double crochets. And they're, these stitches are opposing, they're kind of alternating each other. And that's the pattern repeat. So you just carry on and you can make this scarf as long as you like. And I'll just do a turn around here and start the uh, first row repeat. So going into that very first stitch with your single crochet and repeating your row three repeat all the way along. And this is always a good place to count your stitch count, making sure you have 18 single crochets per row. And you can see it's even quite a pretty pattern from the back. <laughs> so it's uh, very nice. So there you go, carry on and I'll come back in a little bit and show you how mine's looking. Welcome back. So I've come to the end of my first ball of yarn and you can see how beautifully this yarn is crocheting up with this self-striping pattern. And then the stitch is such a beautiful stitch and it's just crocheting up so beautifully. So I've come to the end of my skein and I will be joining on the new skein. But there's a couple of things you may want to consider when you're joining on the next color if you're using the self-striping yarn. If it's not self-striping, then you can move forward to the timestamp shown here. But if you are using the self-striping yarn, then if you want to match up the pattern, you're going to have to unravel your ball and take some yarn off to bring you up to the point where you need to change your yarn. And that's what I've done here is I've pulled off the yarn and I've gotten it to where it's just starting to go into the brown and I've snipped that off. So I am at the end of a row of single crochet here. And just another note, if you started your ball of yarn from the outside, your first ball, you wanna continue with your second ball joining from the outside if you have self-striping yarn. And if you started from the inside, you wanna join from the inside as well. Otherwise the stripes will go in the opposite direction and that would look kind of funny. So yeah, so coming to the end of a row of single crochet, you can join on by doing a magic knot and that's a knot that just ties a very secure knot and you can attach the two yarns together and you just carry on crocheting as normal. And I'll put a link to a tutorial on how to do that below. The other thing you can do is just join on as you go and darn in your tail ends. So I'll show you how to do that. So I'm at the end of this row, I'll do my chain three and turn the work. And this is the row where I have 
my front post double crochet right there. So I'll do a double crochet into the first stitch. And so I'm just going to do a partial double crochet. So rather than completing it, I'm just going to stop with two loops on the hook. I'll drop this tail and bring on the other piece of yarn and just put that on your hook and pull that through the rest of the stitch. And then you can take your two tails and kind of tuck them in behind. And it's a little bit awkward here at first, but you just carry on and you can kind of hold those tails in behind your work. And then for the next stitch, it'll be a front post double crochet and going into that next stitch. And, and you might be joining into a row of single crochet. It just depends on where you run out of, of yarn. So then I'll do a double crochet into the next stitch here. And then I'll do a front post double crochet into the next stitch. And so now you have your two tails at the back. And again, you just darn those in later on and then just carry on with your new ball of yarn. So I'll see you once we get further along here. All right. So I have the scarf is at 70 inches or 178 centimeters. And that is as short as I would make it for a man's scarf. You may wanna go to 74 inches or maybe 76 inches, but I'm stopping at 70 inches because it's a point in the color where I want to stop. And also I wanna save some yarn for a mat, making a matching hat. So you can see here how beautifully this whole scarf has crocheted up. I just love these colors. I love the self-striping yarn. So here I am at the color point where I want to stop. I have a little bit of lighter tan yarn before I go into the gray. So I want to stop at this point here. So I have I'm at the point where there's a row of single crochet and it doesn't matter which row of single crochet repeat. You just want to end up on a row of single crochet. And then all you do is do one more row of single crochet to finish this off. So chain one, turn your work and then do a row of single crochet all the way back going under both loops. So you just finish the last part of the scarf with two rows of single crochet. So go ahead and do that and I'll see you at the end. And then coming to the end of this row, you do the last single crochet in the last single crochet from the previous row, do a chain one to fasten off and just cut your tail and pull that through. And then you want to just darn in your tail ends and um, you can then block the scarf and you can do that in two different ways. You can either wash it by hand and then lay it flat to dry and just sort of uh, stretch it out and block it. Or you can use a hand steamer. That's what I always do. I like using a hand steamer. And then at this point, your scarf can be done. Um, it's you can finish it at this point and it's a beautiful scarf just as it is. However, you have a couple of other op options. If you like, you can add some tassels that would look really lovely. Or you can go ahead and crochet a border around using a complementary color that is in the color of your self-striping yarn. And I know these two colors work really well. All right, so now we'll crochet a, a row of single crochet all the way around for a border. And I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about your yarn of choice. So the complementary color that I'm using, again, is this Bernat Premium Yarn. And it's a number four medium weight yarn. 
and the yarn the line brand yarn is also a number four medium weight yarn and you can see there's a very significant difference in the weight of this yarn this is a much heavier number four than this is so that will make a difference in how you crochet around the border and I'll uh, explain that to you in a bit so you'll be starting with doing single crochets um, on one side of your scarf you'll have the double crochet space and you'll see in that double crochet space there's sort of a big hole and then a smaller hole and we'll be crocheting into the big hole on the other side of your scarf you'll have your row of chain three that acts as a double crochet and that one's easy to crochet into that's very obvious so we'll start on this side here and all you do is you'll join on with a single crochet. So create a slip knot and put that on your hook, keeping your tail to the right and joining on in any one of these double crochet spaces on the side and not into the small hole, but into the bigger hole, you'll join on with a single crochet. So put your hook through the the loop pull the yarn from behind flip your tail over you'll have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through two loops and that's your first single crochet and then push that over and do a second single crochet into that double crochet space now this is where I am doing two single crochets in each double crochet space because my yarn is chunkier. If you're using this finer yarn, you'll have to do three double crochets into these double crochet spaces because if you just do two, it'll be too tight and it'll uh, crumple your scarf. So you need to do three double crochets if you're using a finer yarn, or three single crochets if you're using a finer yarn. So going over to the next double crochet space you skip the row of single crochet and go into the next double crochet space and do two or three single crochets depending on your yarn of choice and then skip your row of single crochets skip that little hole and going into the bigger hole of that double crochet you'll do two or three single crochets and you'll do that until you get to the corner now coming into the corner each one of your corners will be a little bit different but you're looking for a, an obvious space which should be your single crochet but you might be working into a knot or something so you just want to find a nice space to go into there and with this heavier yarn you can do three or four single crochets to get around the corner i'm doing three um, and then with the other yarn you may do four or five single crochets to get around the corner so you have to judge that for yourself so then going into the end of the scarf you'll just simply do a single crochet into the end of each single crochet along the end of the scarf just one single crochet into each stitch and that is your simple border it really is that simple so you'll carry on and you can see here how that nicely that looks on this side so again you'll do two or three single crochets into those spaces one single crochet all the way along here and then in the corner you'll work three four or five single crochets to get around the corner and then coming up this side of your scarf you'll work into your chain three spaces with two or three single crochets and work your way all the way around the scarf now coming to the end of this round you will join by doing a slip stitch into that first single crochet and for this i'm not going to do a chain one to fasten off i'm just going to pull the yarn through and then i'm going to darn in my tail ends and block it and i'll show you my final reveal so here it is all done i gave it a nice press with my hand steamer the hand steamer works really nice for crochet garments i use it a lot so of course i can't get the whole project into the camera but you can see how beautifully this worked out and and um and 
just look at how the back side of this pattern looks. It, this in and of itself is really quite lovely. So this scarf could actually even be reversible. Now I will be doing a matching hat tutorial to go with this scarf. I have a couple of small crochet projects in between, but if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you won't miss when that tutorial comes up. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next time. Thank you for joining me.